So I've been quietly collecting a few new items, mostly from the drugstore, that I've been wanting to play with, and I thought, what better way to do it than on camera? So keep on watching as we start from scratch and end up with this look. Here we go. So I have no real game plan here, but I have assembled a bunch of new makeup. I think it's all from the drugstore. No, my lip balm is not, but everything else is. And so I thought I'd just throw on some makeup, chit chat a little bit, catch up, and what have you. So speaking of that lip balm, this is the Wander Beauty Beach Balm. It's just clear. It's nice. So are about 8 million other lip balms. So I'm not suggesting you run out and get this one, but it is nice. So I picked up the new L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. And I initially picked it up in the shade 400, which I just recently wore in a video, I think has already gone up. And I looked, it, it might be a perfect match, but I think it makes me look a little more ghostly pale than I'd like to. So I went back to Walmart actually, and I picked up 405, which is, um, I'm sure it has like a name. No, it doesn't. I think it's just 405. Porcelain, there we go. So I thought let's pop that on to start. I'm gonna do like a pump and a half. It wore well, um, I guess I wore it yesterday, but I don't know where that, like I said, turns out as far as filming goes. It's very lightweight. It has very nice coverage. My initial impression was that it's a nice little foundation to add to the rotation. So I'm just popping that on. Still pretty pale. I mean, I am pale. Like this is what I am. I will list all the brushes in the order in which I use them and all the makeup as well in the description box, also in the order in which I use them, just to make it easy. I feel like this foundation feels, well, it's very lightweight. It's not as high coverage as I thought it would be. Um, and lately I haven't really been into high coverage. My skin is really cooperating quite well lately, but I don't know why, I just expected this to have more coverage to it than it than it does. It has, um, it does have a fragrance to it, which I don't really notice with other L'Oreal foundations. I don't know if that's just something, maybe they all do, but this one, it's like, um, like a faint floral, chemical floral. It doesn't bother me, but I just thought you should know about it in case, you know, it's not your thing. Actually, you know what? I'm also, I picked up the Eco Tools sponge. I'm gonna take what, I was gonna take whatever is left on my hand, which is not much, so let's just do a little bit more. Bounce that around in some spots that need a little more coverage. I have had this Eco Tools sponge before. I don't even know if I got to use it, maybe once, before a certain dog that has recently made an appearance in my videos thought it would make an excellent chew toy, which it did not. So that's the foundation, as you can see, you can still see freckles, you can still see blemishes, just, you know, a very even skin tone. If you're looking for serious coverage, I don't think this is what you're gonna enjoy. But speaking of serious coverage, where is it? Aha, finally got my hands on the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. My display at Walmart was thoroughly picked over, so I picked up two that I think are gonna work. One for my under eyes and one for blemishes, so we'll just see how it goes. So for under eyes, I got Fair Beige. Doesn't look like there's a lot of, um, I played with this like for a hot minute yesterday when I got it home. It doesn't look like there's a lot of difference between the two. This, these two shades are actually about five shades apart on their color scale, but they don't look that different to me. So I'm just gonna pat that in. I didn't go with my usual MAC Prep and Prime. I'm just gonna go right in with this concealer and I am using a beauty blender because it seemed like it might be pretty thick, but maybe that was a mistake. Let's try a finger on this side, see how we feel. See, that's some serious pigmentation. Yeah, I like, this obviously isn't blended in all the way, but I like the coverage better with my finger. Then I can always kind of tap it in a little bit with the beauty blender, but let me add a little more so we're even. So this is fair beige, just a wee bit. So I feel like that is very brightening. It might be a little too brightening. And then for blemishes, I'm gonna go with light peach, which may or may not work. We shall see. Um, that seems pretty light. It seems a little too pink. 
but we are gonna make it work because I can just go grab some different powder and warm up my face and then make it all kind of blend together. This is very pigmented stuff though. If I could get the right shade, I think I'd really enjoy it. It feels, this is a first impression here, this feels, the concealer itself feels a little dry. So I don't know how this is gonna wear on the face long term, but it has amazing coverage. We're just gonna work with it, it's not ideal. I'm gonna set my under eye, where did my setting brush go? With the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Loose Powder. It's very loose, it's very fine. If you have contacts, close your eyes when applying. So I have several different concealers going on and foundation that aren't quite right, I think. So I'm just gonna kinda powder the whole thing with the It Cosmetic Celebration Foundation. It's technically a powder, no it is, a powder foundation. So it's also gonna give me a little more coverage on top of all that, but because it's, it's in the shade Fair, but see how it's kind of yellowy? So it's gonna warm everything up and kind of blend it all together. So hopefully I will have created a united front here. Like I said, I was at Walmart, I picked up quite a few things, and I finally checked out the Pro Fusion display. <gasps> wow. I'm, I have been playing with this stuff and I'm really impressed. First of all, the price points on this stuff is ridiculous. Like, if this stuff turns out to be as good as I think it is, then it's gonna be, it's just, it's, it's gonna be amazing for so many people. So I picked up the highlight and contour palette. I'm not a big contour person, I think you all know that by now. But when I saw that it has this light shade right here, um, where is it, right there, and then three highlighter shades, the other two shades, I don't really think I'm gonna use a matte highlighter or the really dark tan sculpt. It's a little too, I tried it, it's not, I thought maybe I could use it as a bronzer. It doesn't really work as a bronzer for me, but for the purposes of this video, I thought let's try some contour. I'm gonna take that light sculpt shade and do the tilt and tuck and suck. It's very light, as in, can you really see a line there? A little bit, perfect. Can you hear Rowdy pacing or see him? Maybe he'll make another appearance, I don't know. Yeah, I really like this contour powder because it's light enough that if I wanna pack it on, I really can, but also forgiving enough on me that I won't look like I have candy bars stapled to my face, so I'm gonna contour the jawline. I'm gonna go in with just a regular bronzer, just again, to kind of blend in the contour. And I just grabbed the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. I don't even know if this is still available, but I love it. And with a bigger brush, I'm gonna go in kind of all over where I've already been and then add a little more color. I've been hearing from a lot of you that you are very much enjoying the book club selection for March and that a lot of you have finished it already and have moved on to the second book in the series. We are not discussing the second book in the series, but I'm really, really glad that you all are enjoying the selection and indebted to the subscriber who recommended that to me in the first place. Okay, I'm gonna come back to the highlight palette. So here's a complaint, by the way, just a little one. This is a very affordable palette, which is fabulous, and I think the quality overall is very good, far beyond what you're paying for. But here's a problem. So this broke like the first time I opened it, and I don't think it's fixable. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a little, just like one of those little things. So. We have three shades here. This one is a little too dark for me. And of these two, I tried this one yesterday, this heartfelt one. So let's go with the, another option. Let's go with this goldy nude one, Impulse. So it's not as, um, I would say, I'd say I have a dog that has the shvilkies. I don't know that word. Um, means he can't sit still in Yiddish. I would say that for drugstore, quality drugstore prices. I think you have better options at the drugstore than this. This is not as creamy as I'd like. It's not as pigmented as I'd like. I had the same general problem with heartfelt yesterday. So, I don't know. I think even though this is a very affordable palette, 
if you're really only buying it to use this shade, I feel like there are probably other options out there. Now, as for blush, I'm a little late to this party as well. It's from Milani. It's one of those, their blushes that looks like a little flower. This is the shade Blossom Time Rose. And we're gonna pop that on. It's very soft. I don't like a lot of color on my cheeks. So I like a very soft, subtle blush. Obviously, if you are more in the middle of the spectrum to darker, this is not going to work for you. Or I think if you do tend to pile on too much blush and you wanna to tone it down just a little bit, you can dip your brush in this and go over it and kind of diffuse it without taking away too much of the color. So that's one way to use a very sheer light blush. And I do really like this color. I'm gonna go pencil in my brows, not very exciting, so I'll be right back for that. And then we'll keep on chatting. Elmay sent me a whole bunch of stuff. I haven't been able to play with any of it, but I did pull this out. It's the Elmay Brow Styler in the shade Light Brown. And my favorite brow mascara is still NYX, but I thought I would give this a go. I can tell you I already do not love this comb. See? See how fine that comb is? That's great, but how do you how do you use it to get in your brush in your brow hairs without without making a mess? Let's see. I don't really have anything handy to wipe that up. There we go. Okay, so I'm not loving that. And it is also a little bit dark for me. Let's move on to the eyes, which I'm very excited about. So Profusion, again, I picked up two palettes. I couldn't make up my mind, and at like $10 or less per palette, why not? So I got the chocolates, and I got the naturals. So yesterday, I was playing with chocolates, and... They're so pretty, check this out. But look at all these pretty colors. They're very creamy. There's an interesting array of shades and a few outliers, like that whole green section there. I'm not really sure what that's about. But then the naturals, the brush is actually not bad. It's like a little dome shape. I wouldn't use it to like blend out a crease, but it's, it's nice. A little too dense for blending. And then this is the naturals, which also looks very neat. I think I'm gonna try the naturals. I haven't tried this one yet, and I think I'm going to try to do this, which is on the back. Let's see if we can mimic that. Sweep doll. Does anyone do this? Does anyone actually follow the directions on like an eye look that comes with the makeup? Is that a like I always kind of forget to do that. Um, so it's a sweep doll into crease and blend outwards. So doll is this very nice transition color right here. So let's do that. So I'm sweeping it. Of course, it's way more pigmented on me because, well, look at me. So we're gonna sweep it. Also, I need to clean my brushes. It's like an endless cycle. You get them all clean, they're nice and pretty, and then you gotta clean them again. Now, press Terrific onto the lid. Terrific would be, oh, the shade I would've wanted to put on the lid anyway. This nice little shimmer shade. And I like how they say press, so they're fully aware that you're gonna get the most payoff by just using your finger. So we're putting that on the lid. Ooh, this is, I usually go for a lighter shade on my lid and maybe this is a nice change. Okay, what's next? Apply Cozy on the outer lid and blend into crease. Cozy would be this, chocolatey brown here. It's really the only dark matte shade outside of this black one. So just using an E25, we're just gonna stamp that in the corner and kind of blend up. Ooh. It's pretty pigmented, I think we can see. Don't worry, there will be more blending. I just wanna get the color on and then I'll go back and blend. You know what, this is not on the list, but I'm gonna go in with sugar, which is a, like a whitish, cream and I'm just gonna highlight, not highlight, but kind of blend out the top there, brow bone, and along the edge a little bit just to clean up this muddy mess on the outer corner that I may or may not have contributed to. And I'm also going to take a much more narrow pointy brush. I'm gonna make take an old I don't think it's available anymore. MAC 221, which is just a much more narrow brush. Just a tiny bit of that cozy. Wipe it off a little bit and just pull it into the socket line crease a little bit just to add a little definition, which I think we are missing. 
And then the only other instructions say to highlight the inner corner of the eye with excited. And excited is this gold shade here. Take a Sephora concealer brush because it's just really flat and really defined to get in there. I think we need some help balancing out these shades. I think we're gonna have to add some colors on the bottom. So let's go in with a pencil brush and doll, which was what we initially put, and run that underneath. So I like this palette. I'm just looking at the color options here. I wish, this is a pretty shade. I wish there was a shade, one shade down from, from what I have on my lid right now, just for an all over lid color that's not quite so like it is. There are some other shimmer shades that are really pretty, but they're a little more cool tone. Isn't that pretty? But it's more of a taupey cool tone and I'm working a little bit with a warmer shade. So a lot of mattes in here, which are very nice. I think it's a great price, but then you can mix it with all the shades in here, which is I think what I might end up doing. So I have all these shades and there's a lot more shimmer shades like this whole top row. I'm gonna take Winner from the chocolate shade and just kind of pat it just a little bit, just to tone it down a little bit. So it's not quite so dark on the lid. So continuing on our Hot Mess Express, CoverGirl has sent me their new Exhibitionist Mascara and I've been wearing it off and on the last few days. It has sort of an hourglass shape, really closely packed bristles. I have it in the shade, whatever the darkest is here. Very black, Trait Noir. And um, I like it just fine. I don't know if I like it more than the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, but it is nice to have options at the drugstore. I have noticed that my Lash Paradise does clump rather quickly. I don't think this gets my lashes as dark or as thick as the uh, Lash Paradise does. And it's already a little goopy and it's only about a week old. Of the drugstore mascaras I've tried, I think this is better than most. That is the full eye look, face look, but then there's more. So Maybelline just released this whole line of lipsticks that it's one shade, allegedly is great for every skin tone. So one red for everyone, one mauve for everyone, or mauve, there's a lot of debate on how to say that word. One, one coral, one whatever. So when it's, I saw, this is pink for me and it's supposed to be the pink for everyone. I found this at my grocery store. I like it. Is it pink? I don't think so. Here. Check it out. I think it looks nice. Let me take my hair down. I haven't done anything to it, so I don't know what that's gonna look like. Okay. Um, I think it looks pretty. I think it's a very wearable color on me. Is this pink? I'm looking in the mirror and the monitor. I don't know that I would call it, when I think of pink, I think of like pink, you know? Like candy pink, or this is more like a berry or a rose. I'm getting very particular with my color options, but I wouldn't call this a pink. I would say it's a pretty shade, and I think it would work for a lot of people. I think it works for me. One other thing that was new to me, this one was actually sent to me. This is my nail polish. It's from the brand London Town. Um, I have no jewelry on today. Totally forgot to do that. Anyway, this is from the brand London Town, and the shade is called Afternoon Tea, and um, I think it's a really pretty color. I think they have beautiful colors. They sent me two other colors to try but I haven't tried them yet, so I have no input on this. But I love a milky pink. What I like about this, it's a little more pink than milky. And the other ones veer very, like Essie Fiji to me is just very white, whereas this has some actual color to it, and it kind of makes my hands look a little more tan. Dare we say tan? I don't know. Been enjoying this. If anyone has ever tried London Town Nail Polish, please let me know. I'm, I'm so far so good. So there you go. That is the whole look with a little bit of chit chat, very little chit chat. Let me know what you think of this mostly, I think pretty much all drugstore except from the powders. So that's not bad. Is there, if there's anything else that you're interested in having me try at the drugstore or at a department store, Sephora or what have you, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other video requests, I'm taking requests. Please leave, the, please leave those in the comments below as well. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and choosing to spend whatever free time you have with me for a little bit of that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.